Hello everyone. Over the years, I've had many requests to create tutorials based on my projects. So I figured I'd start with foliage and more specifically, speed tree. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to create a specific plant I used in my Leave No Trace project. While it does cover most of the process, future videos will get more into the details like making custom leaf meshes and exporting to Unreal. Nonetheless, this should give you a good idea of how to approach making your first plant and how to modify it to look like you want. One of the most important things is to have plenty of references as you're working so that you land somewhere near reality with your project. So I've created a plank project in Speedtree and we need to add a trunk to this tree node. So let's right click on that node, click add geometry to selected and choose the trunk. Now by default, this is fairly large and our plant is definitely a lot shorter. So let's go to the spline tab and change the absolute length to something more manageable. Our plant tends to lean a bit, so we're going to set the start angle to something a little bit lower. Because our tree tends to bend a bit as it gets taller, we want to increase the gravity amount. Now, because this curvature might be a little bit extreme, we want to increase the ancestor value up to maintain some of that original straightness, like that. That's a good balance. So the trunk is looking pretty good, but it is a little bit thick. So we're going to go to the skin tab and we're going to lower the radius to thin this out. At this state, subdivisions are looking a little bit low along the length of the trunk. So we're going to go to the segments tab and increase the absolute value along the length to smooth that out a bit. I'm going to make one final tweak to the skin of the trunk and thin up the base a little bit. To do that, I'm going to use the absolute profile and pull that left point down just a bit to make the thickness more consistent along the length of the trunk. I think we're ready to add some branches, so let's right click on the trunk node, add geometry to selected, and select little branches. Now let's switch over to the generation tab and increase the frequency of these branches. We also want to reduce the count just a little bit, we want to increase the spread and the spiral amount to give a little bit of randomization to the orientation of these branches. The boundaries refer to the distance from the first and last point of the trunk. So we're going to make some minor tweaks to those values. Next, we want those branches to start small and then get gradually larger as they reach the end of the trunk. So to do that, we're going to the spline tab and we're going to remove the percentage of parent value and set an absolute value here instead. Next, we're going to go to the absolute parent graph and lower that left point to gradually increase the length of the branches over the length of the trunk. Let's tweak the orientation a little bit. We'll do that by increasing the starting angle and also reducing the roll value just slightly. This gets us more in line with our reference. The branches are still looking a bit straight, so let's change the shape a bit by editing the gravity, ancestor value, and the twist. One of the most powerful tools for modifying the shape of the branches is noise. Let's adjust the amount and the turbulence to add some realism to our tree. Another setting I really like to use is called break. By increasing the chance value, you increase the probability of your branches breaking. This adds some subtle realism to your tree. 
Just like the trunk, the branches start out with very low subdivisions, and a good way to visualize this is to change the render mode to script. It's kind of like a solid wireframe mode. To add some detail, we're going to increase the absolute segments value. The accuracy value controls how many segments are sampled before your value is applied. I'm going to leave this at the default value. Next, we're going to add some little branches to our previous little branches to use as dead stems. Let's rename these to avoid any confusion. We definitely want more of these stems. So let's head over to the generation tab and increase the frequency, lower the count, and let's up the spiral amount to get some randomization. Let's also adjust the boundary. Next, we'll set an absolute length, and we'll also tweak the absolute parent graph to scale the stems along the length of the branches. After that, we'll make some adjustments to the orientation by changing the start angle and also adding a bit of a roll. We'll modify the shape by adding some gravity and also adjusting the ancestor value to add some bend to our stems. Let's also invert the gravity profile. Let's adjust the twist as well. It's always a good idea to add noise and to increase the break chance of your branches. As before, let's set an absolute radius. To smooth out these branches, let's add some more segments. As a final tweak, we'll adjust the ancestor value slightly. By default, there's a hole at the end of our trunk. To close that off, we will just add a cap. We'll adjust the displacement value as well. Let's also thin out the radius at the end of the trunk. Alright, let's add some leaves. To do that, we'll right click on our little branches, add geometry to selected, and choose leaf mesh. By default, it just scatters some planes and it's looking to us to define what materials and leaf meshes we want to use. Now, I've already created some materials and leaf meshes and I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I still want to show you what those things look like. 
If we go back to the leaf mesh node and to the material tab, we'll see a type section where we can define the material and the mesh. Well, I have four different mesh types, so we need to create four different types and assign those materials and those meshes. After that, we'll go to the Generation tab and increase the number of leaves and also make some adjustments to the boundaries. These leaves are kind of big, so let's adjust their size and also add some variation. Let's also scale these leaves along the length of the branches. The actual leaves aren't flat, they're folded and curled, so let's pick these adjustments under the deformation tab. The leaves still feel kind of short, but we can fix that using the scale adjustments in the X and in the Y. Let's also add some variation. Under the local orientation section, we'll make some final tweaks to these settings get these leaves to fall the right way. We'll also adjust the sky sensitivity and the final adjustment settings as well. This is looking pretty good. I think we'll just make the leaves a little bit bigger and then apply some wind. These are the settings that I used. You may want your tree to be less calm and maybe more windy. It's really up to you. And there you have it. Some really nice foliage with wind ready to be exported into Unreal Engine. In a future video, we'll be covering how to make leaf meshes and how to optimize the model and set up LODs. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.